let's take a look at a very large muscle in the posterior lateral and anterior pelvis going down to the thigh, the gluteus medius. We're looking at it on the right side, the cadaverous prone for some context, the right posterior superior iliac spine, PSIS is here, left PSIS here, sacrum over here, the iliac crest is all down over here, the greater trochanter is down over this way. We have reflected back the gluteus maximus so we can better see the gluteus medius. Just since we're doing our relationships, we have the piriformis sciatic nerve and other deep lateral rotators running down this way. And up over here on the trunk, we can see some external abdominal oblique musculature. Okay. The gluteus medius attaches all along the external surface of the ilium, the pelvic bone, along what's called the posterior iliac line. And there are posterior fibers, middle fibers, and anterior fibers. So it really wraps around that external ilium. From there, all of the fibers coalesce to attach onto the greater trochanter of the femur. Therefore, the gluteus medius crosses the hip joint. If we look at what its joint actions would be, open chain, the distal attachment, the femur moving toward the proximal attachment, the pelvis, well, pretty much all of the fibers do abduction, abduction of the thigh at the hip joint in the frontal plane. The posterior fibers also do extension and lateral external rotation of the thigh at the hip joint. The anterior fibers also do flexion and medial internal rotation of the thigh at the hip joint. The middle fibers are pretty much pure abductor, abductor fibers of the thigh at the hip joint. But that's just the open chain joint actions of the thigh, the femur moving. When we have a closed chain scenario where the foot is stable on the ground, for example, in gait cycle or standing, then we would have the proximal attachment, the pelvis, move towards the distal attachment, the femur, the thigh. And we would have movement of the pelvis at the hip joint. Well, the reverse closed chain action for abduction of the thigh is depression or lateral tilt of the pelvis. So that's true for pretty much all of the fibers. The reverse action, closed chain for extension of the thigh would be posterior tilt of the pelvis. The reverse closed chain action for the flexion of the thigh for the anterior fibers would be anterior tilt of the pelvis at the hip joint. And reverse chain for lateral rotation of the femur is contralateral rotation of the pelvis. And for Medial rotation of the femur would be ipsilateral rotation of the pelvis. So there we have all of our open chain and closed chain concentric shortening joint actions. But actually the most important function for the gluteus medius is its isometric stabilization function on the pelvis here. During gait cycle when the opposite limb, foot, lifts off the floor, the pelvis should collapse down towards that foot that is now in swing phase off the floor, which means that the pelvis on our side here, the stance side where the foot is still on the floor, would lift up relatively. To stop that, we isometrically contract the gluteus medius with a depression lateral tilt force on the pelvis on this side, which keeps the pelvis from elevating here, which keeps it from depressing, laterally tilting on the other side. So that is the most important function of gluteus medius, isometric stabilization in the frontal plane. Now just have a little bit of context here just to show if we pull gluteus medius out of the way, we can see that it would have been attaching all along in here between that posterior line and what's called the anterior line of the ilium. And then deep over in here, we can see the gluteus minimus. 
So that is an exploration of the gluteus medius on the right side of the body, both the attachments and the actions, functions of this very important muscle.